we have another question slightly more difficult right because this one here does not have a graph accompanying it okay but we're still going to answer it okay so it says the equation of the function g of x so that's the name of our equation is a over x plus q right because we don't have a picture with us with uh, accompanying this how do we figure out what type of graph this is we look at where the x is can you see the x is in the denominator and if x is in the denominator it makes it a hyperbola so this is a hyperbola it says this hyperbola passes through the point three and two we know that this satisfies the equation and if they ask us to determine the equation we're going to substitute this into the place of x and y it says it has the range of y is an element of, let's read this, it says all the way from negative infinity till 1 or from 1 till infinity. What does this mean? This gives us a clue about its asymptote. Because can you see that this here, it's saying it's coming all the way. So this is our y value. It's coming all the way till 1. It can't pass through 1. It skips 1 and then it continues going on. So now we know that our asymptote, let's write this down. Asymptote is e is equal to wait, y is equal to one we also know that this asymptote value that we just figured out is basically this value over here it must be one isn't it because we know that the q value in the hyperbola stands for the asymptote okay last question says determine the equation of g let's write this down and write your answers okay for g 6.1.1, we know that g of x, I'm going to replace this with y, y is equal to a over x, I'm going to substitute that 1 plus 1, and I'm going to say through a particular point, 3 and 2. We literally just discussed that this is what we do if they ask us for the equation. Sub it in, so 2 is equal to a over, what's our x value? 3 plus 1, take my 1 over, so 2 minus 1 equals a over 3. 2 minus 1 is 1 equals a over 3. I'm going to get rid of my 3, so I multiply both sides by 3, giving me a is equal to 3. Now I can write down my equation of g of x. g of x is equal to 3 over x plus 1 is my answer. Not so bad. It required us to know that our theory that our range cannot pass through this y value of 1 because it's the asymptote. Okay, next question. 6.1.2 says determine the equation of h. So this is a new graph and it's telling us that this new graph is actually the axis of symmetry which has a positive gradient. Let's recap the theory that we know and grab a paper to scribble on. Okay, what theory do we know? We know that if we have a hyperbola, let's say here's our hyperbola for example, and let's put the value at 1, same like the one that we have over here, right? There are two axes of symmetry, okay? The first axis of symmetry is this one here, which has a positive gradient, and it's going to be y is equal to x plus 1. Where am I getting this plus 1 from? It's this value over here. If that was a 7, that would have been a 7. If that was a 11, that would have been an 11. That's the 1 gradient. And the negative 1 is going in this direction over here. And for the negative 1, you just write y is equal to negative x plus 1. So this question is asking us for the one that has the positive gradient. So all we got to do is write that down. So 6.1.2. And they want us to name it h of x, right? h of x is equal to, let's go back here, x plus 1. And we're done. That is it. Okay, second question, 6.2. says, sketch the graphs of g and h on the same system of axes. Clearly show all the asymptotes and intercepts with the axes. I'm going to quickly draw a Cartesian plane. So I'm going to pause. I want you to also pause and draw your Cartesian plane. All right? Okay, 
drew my Cartesian plane. Now I need to actually find values because it says it says clearly show the asymptotes and the intercepts with the axis. So I'm going to draw my asymptote. I'm going to show you guys what I'm doing, but then I'm going to do it more accurately. Here's my scribbling page. Here's my Cartesian plane. We know that the asymptote is at 1, so you're going to draw a dotted line at 1. Okay, let me fill that in nicely. There we go. I drew my asymptote. I clearly labeled it. Okay. Now we're going to try and solve. So this is our equation over here. 3 over x plus 1. We want to solve for any x-intercepts or y-intercepts. So let's scribble that up. We've got y is equal to 3 over x plus 1. Right. x-intercept is where y is equal to 0. So 0 equals 3 over x plus 1. Take that over. Negative 1 equals 3 over x. Multiply by x, giving me negative 1x equals 3. And divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1, giving me x equals negative 3. So now I know at negative 3, which is here, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, I've got an x-intercept. Right. Then we know that this is a hyperbola. It can't be passing through the y. Okay. Because we know that our hyperbola has an asymptote. I'm going to speak a bit louder. There's people moving out of my class. Right. It has a y. It, at the y-axis, it can't ever cut it because the x value is zero, isn't it? And we know that if this here is zero, it's going to be undefined. Right. So it's never ever going to cut the y-axis. Now, I told you people that you need to determine which two quadrants this thing is going to be. Can you see that this here is a positive value? It's a positive 3. That means it's going to be in quadrant 1 over here and in quadrant 3 over there. Okay, now we're just going to find some guiding points for ourselves. How are you going to do that? Just because you want the shape, okay? So what you're going to do is with this value here, let's label it. I've got to label it. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. 1, 2, 3, 4. Four, five. I sincerely apologize for the noise. Everyone is moving from class to class. Negative one, negative two, negative three. All you gotta do is you're gonna say three over and you're gonna substitute this value negative one, right? And plus one, I subbed it into this formula just so that I can see it gives me a value of negative two. So that means something like that. Now I know my graph is gonna look. Oh, I did not pass that nicely. Sorry. Something like that. Make sure it passes through there. Very badly drawn. There we go. All right. And now I'm going to just pass some points over here so that I can get a somewhat shape. So I'm going to do this. And you can do this in table mode as well. Okay. It's going to give me one and four. So there. Okay. Five over two is 2.5. So somewhere there. 3 and 2, so somewhere there. Okay. 1.75, okay, so that's like somewhere there. So can you see this helps us get our graph. And that there is our g of x, right? So we're going to label this here, g of x. And now we need h of x. Now remember h of x is our axis of symmetry. So you don't really have to work out the x-intercept and y-intercept. We know it's going to be passing through this point over here. But I'm just going to show you in case you wanted to know how else to do it. h of x, which was x plus 1. x int is where y is equal to 0. 0 is equal to x plus 1. Take this over. Negative 1 is x. So it's going to be passing through here and here. Okay? You take your ruler. You put your ruler on there and you draw a line passing through. Okay, let me do that. And there we go. That's h of x done. Right, I have to stop this video so you're going to see the end of this video, which is this question, in a separate video. Okay.